So good morning. We're trying a few different things. We're trying the sound system a new way. So with the help of Stephen for that, thanks Stephen and Mike and Diana I know worked on that sound system. So thanks to all of you for helping us try to improve the sound quality. So upcoming events, we are working on our newsletter for announcements. For September is our goal to have one out. If you have anything you would like to put in the newsletter, notes, updates, any news you want to share, please contact Lisa in the office or Vicar Allen via email, or you can call, of course, the church office. Social media presence. So we're thinking ahead of the curve for the social media platforms um, to bring more people to Christ. We have Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channel, and we have a lot of these. So if you know any way that we can um, create a better presence, please let us know any ideas. Again, please um, contact Vicar Ellen with that because she's really working hard on increasing our internet presence. Um, we'd like to thank, Mel would like to thank everyone for their prayers, calls, cards, flowers, and other goodies as he continues to recover. It's truly a blessing, he says, to have such a loving, caring, extended family at St. John's. And it also helps to have the best nurse in town. <laughs> School supplies, it's in there. We're still collecting, but John just gave me an update this morning. The school that we donate to, which I'm pretty sure is Essex Elementary, and I can't see John if he's shaking his head or not. Yeah, he's shaking his head, yes. Um, they said that they want to distribute them, that, you know, teachers start back, sad me, this week, tomorrow, but they want to give them out this week. Our school is doing the same thing. So he needs to have them at the school Tuesday morning so that Essex Elementary can distribute them. So if you have any more school supplies you would like to donate to that effort, please try to get them here. I'll be here to about 1 o'clock today, 1.15-ish. Um, tomorrow, Lisa's here from 8 to 12. And Tuesday morning, I guess if you get beat John here, but if you come in another time, maybe you can leave them in the take some, leave some box. And John can check there if you come later today or mo Monday. Well, yeah, later Monday after Lisa leaves. And he could probably check there and get them out. And if somebody takes some of them from the take some, leave some box, we hope it's because they need them. Um, prayer requests, continue to send them to Grace Miles or Barbara Adams and their phone numbers are there. Worship service, we're continuing our three platforms, Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube, and we're really working hard. We're trying every week to make changes, to make it not only good for people in person, but for people on Facebook and Zoom. And there's quite a few people who watch the recorded on Facebook, because I've talked to a couple of them. We're still having problems with mailing issues for the bulletin. It's definitely a post office thing. If you've received anything in the mail, sometimes it comes in two days. Other times it takes three weeks. That is definitely a post office. Please, if you want your bulletin before Sunday, call Lisa and arrange to pick it up. She can leave a copy and it takes some leave some box and an envelope for you, whatever works for you. And I think a few people have already taken advantage of that from what Lisa told me. Um, the next announcement is just offering, which all of you know, Rally Day. Bigger Ellen, I'm excited, has great plans, and we're not having it just as a Sunday school thing. It is a whole church-wide Rally Day because we've been a part. So if you have any skills, singing, liturgical, I can't even say it this morning, liturgical dance, our praise band, dramatic biblical, res, res, I can't talk today. And of course, a rousing service of worship and welcome will be happening. If you have any talents or skills that you'd like to put on display for Rally Day, please let Vicar Ellen know. We'll be happy to have that. And we also need to mention, I want to be careful, our copyrights down here at the bottom. If you've got your bulletin, that allows us to do the songs on Zoom and Facebook and of course put it on YouTube. So I did want to mention those. And I also want to send a special thanks out to Diana and Doug Knoll. You know we had the iPad problem, and I still haven't unlocked that, but I'm working on it. I just have a lot of other things to do. 
So Diana had one from Mr. Albert. Everybody I'm sure remembers Mr. Al Mensch and it wasn't being used and she uh, soon factory reset it. And um, Stephen showed up Wednesday and we were able to download the app. So we do now have access to the mixer and that's why we're working on the sound again, trying to improve it even more. So thanks to Diana and Doug for donating that to the church. And we're still gonna try to unlock that iPad. I have not given up. It just might take me longer because we're going to find that password or that receipt or something maybe three years from now, maybe three days from now, but we will find it. I know that's the way things work. So um, keep all of that in mind. And so announcements are ended. If I forget anything, I assume Vic Rollins is going to um, make sure I'm taken care of for that. And we're going to switch places. Someone's waiting to come in. Today's a super special day. The weather is beautiful. Um, everybody here is beautiful. Everybody on Zoom looks wonderful and awake. And I can't see the folks on Facebook, but I believe in spirit they are totally with us. And we are so grateful to God. So today we're going to talk about the prophet Jeremiah. He speaks of the incurable wounds of his suffering, yet he finds in God's word the delight of the heart. When Peter doesn't grasp Jesus' words about suffering, Jesus tells the disciples they will find their lives in losing them. Such sacrificial love is described by Paul when he urges us to associate with the lowly and not repay, repay evil with evil at any time. In worship, we gather as a community that we might offer ourselves, all of us, for the sake of our suffering world. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation, amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so the, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life that you give us. Amen. O oh, most beloved of God, believe that you are significant, you are valued, and you are in the arms of our Lord. And by the radical abundance of divine mercy and forgiveness, we do have peace through God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. We have obtained priceless grace. Our sins are forgiven, and we begin again with a clean slate. Let us live now in hope, for hope never disappoints. Hope is the anchor for our soul. We love others because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beautiful gathering hymn, O Jesus, I have promised. I shall not 
fear the battle if you are by my side. Nor wander from the pathway if you will be my guide. Oh, that he will be near me, the world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, then draw nearer to shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear you speaking in accents clear and still. Above the storm of passion, the murmurs of self-will, I now to be assured, me to hassle or control. They'll speak and make me listen, oh, guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, you have promised to hold and follow you, that where you are in glory, your servant shall be too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Let us pray together. Oh God, we thank you for your son, who chose this path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we're going to thank Ms. Bev Dixon for doing our reading today. Before I do these readings, I would like to dedicate these two readings to my late husband, Leroy who passed away suddenly 29 years ago today. So here is the first reading, the introduction, Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 15 through 21. Jeremiah's delight in the word of the Lord is contradicted by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seeming unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he re repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple word, I am with you. The word, O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down a retribution for me or my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of many merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. Where's the thing? Okay. Okay. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. 
I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Our psalm is Psalm 26. Give judgment to me, O Lord, I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the merciless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands of innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. The introduction, Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. The it, word, let, us, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Continue to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wise than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your evils are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. The gospel for today is from Matthew. After Peter confesses that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God, Jesus reveals the ultimate purpose of his ministry. These words prove hard to accept, even for a disciple whom Jesus, just last week in our readings, called the rock. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid that Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with the angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hmm. Get behind me, Satan! Them's fighting words. 
Yes, they are. They're fighting words unless you read how softened and poetic they become in the King James Version of our Bible, which is the same language that Shakespeare used. I have to read it to you. It really softens it. But Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savors not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very soft way um, of saying what Jesus said. Get behind me, Satan. Why did Jesus spit these words out at Peter? When just before when Peter said, you are the Messiah, Jesus said, yes, and you are the rock on which I will build my church. And that happens in the exact same chapter, what we read last week. I tell you something, it's, it's a real rough confrontation we have here. Think about it. There are many different translations of the Bible that say it this way. Um, Peter, it says, um, Peter took him to task. Yeah, that's one translation. Another one says, he took him out of the crowd, rebuking him. He took him aside to yell at him. These are actual Bible translations. Um, he reprimanded him. Those are, those are things that, that a teacher would do to a student, not the opposite. He scolded him. He told him not to talk like that ever again. He protested, that's impossible, Master, that can never be, so stop talking about it. And one translation, to, one translation says, Peter took hold of him, took hold of his shoulders, pushed him outside the crowd, and said those, those things to him. That's pretty desperate of Peter. And I think it's because Peter's like everybody else was in those days. When the Messiah came, he was going to free all the Jews from the oppression of Rome. He was going to fight. He was going to be the leader of an army, a great rebellion that would take the Jews back to their original standing as God's chosen people in freedom, in their own place. All the people wanted that. We want that today. We have to face it. I mean, we want that today. We want Jesus to champion us so that in this world, we don't have to worry about pandemics. We want him to fight. We want him to, you know, if we have a problem with someone who's, who's being nasty or evil, we want Jesus right there to, you know, give us the words that we can just floor that guy, you know, take him out. But Jesus doesn't do that. Who ever wants to be shamed humiliated, embarrassed. Those are some of my great fears. So much so that if I say a rousing goodbye to someone that has left the school or a place where I am, and I walk out and I'm like, that was so hard. And then that person, I see that person again going down the hall, I'll go five miles out of my way rather than see that person again because of embarrassment. Because that's embarrassing. You just say a rousing goodbye and then you're like, <laughs> hey, I don't like embarrassment. Once I accidentally walked through the chapel at the Moore's Hospital where I worked, and there was a person praying. I sat down immediately and prayed, even though I was 10 minutes late for my meeting. So I went to the meeting, and my chaplain supervisor said, why are you late? I said, because I couldn't be embarrassed like that. I couldn't like walk through the chapel. He said, you are hopeless. But embarrassment will always be one of my fears. So imagine having a savior who purposefully comes and in, is embarrassed in the worst ways possible, being practically naked on a cross, the most shameful way to die. We don't want that. We want power. We want someone who's going to, you know, just pop off that cross in a great army uniform with a sword. And that's not what Jesus did. He came for everybody like us who are not the richest people, not the most powerful, who suffer, who have so many problems, who need his healing presence, who need his comfort and his peace. God in the Old Testament always looked at the oppressed, the disenfranchised, the, the people who didn't fit in society. Did you know that? One of my professors recently challenged me to find all the passages in the Old Testament. God did that too. He didn't wait for Jesus to come 
He always championed the oppressed, the suffering, the disenfranchised, the outcast. I just, you know, it's so exciting when you have something in common with a great biblical figure. Peter and I had something in common. Yeah. So my mother was the most stoic German Lutheran that ever lived. And she never missed a day of church, ever. And one time her gallbladder was so awful that the doctors couldn't believe she could stand up, let alone attend church. She was so sick. She still watched my kids, got them to school, and then it was time for church and she's like doubled over. So I said, mom, please don't go to church today. And she said, get behind me, Satan. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so Peter and I both got yelled at and we were both told to get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. So those words have always meant a lot to me. When I saw they were in our, um, our scripture for today, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So what do we need those words in our lives for? Why should we have those words in our life? Because there are so many times that Satan torments us. I'm just sick of it. Every time Chris would get everything set up and it would be perfect, then the laptop had a four hour reboot, four hours of updates. That's not possible. That's not even computer wise. That's ridiculous. That's Satan. I swear to him. Every single time you are growing closer and closer to God and getting God's message out, Satan gets furious and more active. I swear he does. I had a mentor, a wonderful pastor, um, who didn't believe in the devil, and I never understood that. The devil is all through the Bible. Every other tradition believes in the devil, though they may not call him Lucifer. So I asked my pastor, I said, well, what is the force of evil that's called Lucifer? He said, oh, it's just a little rebellion in us. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. The force of Satan was in the garden. It was from the beginning of time asking, um, lying, um, encouraging us to rebel against God. Lying terribly. Look what the devil told Eve. The devil said, oh, God didn't mean it about that tree. That tree is awesome. And if you eat that, you will really have power. So she went right ahead and did it, right? I mean, the devil didn't give her the fruit and stuff it in her mouth, right? We give in. We're the ones that give in. So I liked a lot, I liked Billy Graham's words and books. So I looked at what he says are our worst temptations right from Satan, the liar. He said Satan tempts us to seek pleasure and not responsibility. Satan tempts our morality. He gives us nice destructive habits that he swears are good for us like overeating to make you calm or smoking or vaping or a lot of alcohol to sort of self-medicate you, right? Oh, I, that, I don't drink that much. Yeah, that's Satan telling us, hey, more destruction of the body might be nice because that's the temple of God and I don't like to see healthy temples for God. Then Billy Graham said there are sins of the mind, right? There's anger, jealousy, nasty thoughts about others, yeah, bitterness, unforgiveness. I can't look at one section of my family that isn't, luckily not my immediate family, but the wider family is not torn apart by jealousy. Three wonderful siblings in great communion and fellowship until they turned a little bit older and had a big fight over a roll of tape and they haven't spoken or seen each other for 30 years. That's called ridiculous bitterness, envy, right? There was a deeper envy behind it because one of them had gotten the family business and one of them hadn't. So obviously it wasn't just a roll of tape, but the roll of tape set it off. And that's what Billy Graham's saying. He says, when we don't forgive others, that's Satan. When we have bitterness inside us, that hurts us. And we need Jesus. Oh my gosh, do we need Jesus? We need Jesus. <sighs> We're overwhelmed. We are a society that's overwhelmed. We say the, pande the pandemic helped us slow down a bit, but it also overwhelmed us in other ways, right? We're anxious about so many things. 
Um, I looked up a lot about fear, because I have plenty to tell you about, but I thought maybe, you know, there's others that I should know about. Um, we're, we fear finances, obviously, because of everything going on. We fear that our jobs may not be secure, or if they are secure, we're making pennies for being with patients who have COVID. And, and the front responders are the ones making hardly any money and putting themselves into danger. That's not right, right? We fear the coronavirus itself. We fear it. I mean, maybe we let down too early and some of the schools that open now have cases of it. And we're like, wait, wait, we gotta, we gotta be careful. We fear the news. Boy, if you really want to watch a horror movie, watch the news. It's worse than any horror movie. It's worse. And I'm addicted to news because I need, I want to know what's going on for sermons, for prayers, for all kinds of things. And I just see all these point blank shootings. I hear all the bullets. I see the people crumble. Nothing is sacred anymore from the news. They show it, and all they have to say before is, this may be disturbing to some viewers. Yeah, and then they show you death, suffering, destruction, human hatred, um, just all kinds of evils. Horrendous scenes every day pop into our heads, right? Suffering, unrest on the news, all that. Now, this I thought was one of the... the um, more interesting phobias that people have. Every single day of our lives, we make 35,000 decisions. Scientists and doctors tell us that. It could be as simple as, you know, do I step up, you know, put my skirt out? <laughs> do I, um, you know, do I stand down there? Do I open a window? Do I go to the store? It's very simple, but then some are bigger. Like what medical advice am I gonna take? Should I have this operation? Um, should I take these medicines that I've been prescribed? Some are big, but some are just tiny. Like, what should I eat for breakfast? What should I have for lunch? 35,000 of them, though, can be certainly overwhelming. There's so many that we have now a new phobia that is in the, psychi the psychiatry um, list, and it's called decidophobia. I'm not joking. It's called decidophobia. And there's estimated that a million Americans have it, Almost 1% of the population, and it manifests itself in people not being able to make simple decisions like what do you want to eat for dinner. And we joke because a lot of people say, I don't care, it's all right. And that's being polite maybe, but these people have panic attacks when they're in a position to make a decision. And some of these are life decisions. Should I go back to college? Should I you know, get my GED from high school because I you know, messed up when I was a kid? Um, but Think about it. That's overwhelming. The news is overwhelming. Everything we seem to do is overwhelming. And who's there to help us through it? Jesus, honestly. That's the only answer. When we are stressed and overwhelmed, we have prayer. We have quiet time with Jesus. We have Bible readings that tell us Jesus went through every single thing we do. And that's why he came. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus for that very reason. So that when we suffer, he is next to us. We can hold the hand of the Lord. We can have him enclose us in his arms and comfort us. We have the Holy Spirit in us to give us power. That, yes, we can do this. We can make this work. We can, we can be okay. Um, Jimmy Fallon is a late night host and... I sometimes watch him since the coronavirus. I always watch him because it's funny when he's all zooming by himself and whatnot. And he has this one skit where he dresses as a cowboy and he doesn't like certain things. Like he doesn't like that you can choose five internets. He wants one internet that you choose. So when he says that, he'll say, y'all are four internets, go on deal. <laughs> so we picked up that phrase and we love that phrase as a family. Like if the dog's bothering you, just say, go on deal. This, even though it seems a little funny, could be what you say when the devil's after you. Seriously, get behind me, Satan, or you just say, go and get it. I'm tired of this. This temptation's enough. I am not going to do this. I am not going to gossip. I am not going to, you know, tell my friend one thing and do another. I'm not going to lie to you. Go and get it. <laughs> and as long as we can say that, right, get behind me, Satan, for my mind is on things of the Lord. 
and not on things of humankind. I already live in the kingdom of heaven. So you go and get it. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I love that hymn. That's so modern and pretty. All right, children's sermon. Um, I want to say, children, we have two in church, um, and then hopefully a lot on Zoom and Facebook. And I wanted to ask you how you feel about school starting. It's like in a week for a lot of people online, and some people have already, some of you children have already gone back to in-person school. How do you feel? How many people of you, how many children are excited? Raise your hand. Excited for school to start. Changes are hard. We have one in church who's excited. She's happy. We have one in church who isn't. <laughs> um, there is a little bit of fun hooked in with online learning in that you can set up your own little schoolhouse area if you want and have your own little desk. Um, I know that, that the children in my family, my grandchildren and my daughter who's going back to school, they're making their own little rooms and um, Hadley has this desk that's so old, it has an inkwell in it, it's so beautiful. It's an antique that we found that a friend gave us. Um, and you can paint it and make it arty. Um, and I know Chloe's got this gorgeous new little office. So that's how they're kind of comforting themselves. But hey, routine starts again and we have a lot of work and we're not gonna be able to see our friends or our teachers, but changes are rough. That's what the children's sermon title is, changes. And they're rough. The pandemic's been rough on us. 
right kids? It's been tough. We don't have our dance classes. If we're lucky, we can do a little dance camp or do something on Zoom wearing masks. Um, my other granddaughter, um, Quinn, is now actually in a soccer tournament. She's allowed two um, people to watch. They have to be distanced and she has to wear a mask the whole while she plays. That's hard when you're trying to breathe and you have a mask on. So things are a little tiny bit loosening up and the governor said it was, you know, it was time for us to think about little baby steps and getting back together, but it's still a change that's so hard to handle. So I want you children to know that whenever you go through a change, you are no different than most of us adults who hate change too. It's hard. And Jesus is our only refuge in this change because the world's going to keep changing. You can talk to your parents, you can talk to friends, you can say, oh, I'm so sad, you know, I can't be with you. But Remember that the only real comfort you're going to get deep down inside is to say, Jesus, please help me through this. And Jesus will. So change is nothing to be afraid of. It's eventually something to accept and to look at it on the bright side and say, wow, I'll still be home with my little desk and my school supplies and I'm going to have a great time in school until we open again and the governor says we may open again soon and you'll be back with teachers and friends hope for that day but make the best of right now all right time for passing of the peace my favorite part peace be with everybody on facebook zoom and in here god's peace 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 with Peace and love, everybody. Peace, love and hugs from Matt and Desi. Bless you all. Peace to everybody. Peace, everybody. I went. Take care of yourself, girl. <laughs> it just feels good to say peace. Even if we can't hug or shake hands, we are, we're sending our spirits to one another to say peace. Sure. There she is. All right, so now um, we have our little offering basket in the back. Um, we're so grateful. Every day I come in, I find more offerings to put on Lisa's desk, and people drop them off, and they're mailed in. And um, We're just so, so grateful that you keep up your offerings so that we can keep up our work. And actually, in, I feel really good about the fact that we're doing a lot of activities. Um, Friends for Supper is gangbusters and wonderful and I was on the phones when they were doing it and the people on the phone were like when's it coming what's what's for dinner tonight and they're so happy and so excited and one lady's like I got my niece and nephew I had to order two extra meals we can't afford this I'm like ah you so understand thank God for friends for supper and thank God for Karen and her staff she's got an awesome staff so let's pray together our offering prayer God of goodness and generosity, we thank you that we can give ourselves to your work here on earth, to be your hands and feet in doing your work in Essex and beyond. Please take what we freely give in time, talent, and money to show your, our love for you. We give back part of what you have given us with sincere gratitude that we have the opportunity to support your work Amen. This statement of faith unites us no matter where we are. Um, together, we, we say the Apostles' Creed as one person, one church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I just want to say that we're kind of saying it very quietly behind our masks, and it's so beautiful to hear that. Just so beautiful.
sorry. <laughs> Confident of your, I forget to take my mask off, that's a new one. Confident of your care and health by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus and you give us help to do that by sending the Holy Spirit to live within us and give us power. Set the mind of your church on divine things and help us to be positive during the suffering of the pandemic. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in our abundant living through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you first created it. Help us to serve you by serving the earth you love with care, cultivation, and clean up and sustaining its resources. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all our leaders, especially Governor Hogan, County Executive Johnny O, and Mayor Jack Young, as well as all our elected officials with wisdom, mercy, and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. We especially name Amanda, Arlene, Brian, Kobe, Cora, Harry, Jamie, Jeffrey, Jen, Josh, Katie, Marie, Marina, Matt, Molly, Patty, Roy, Scarlett, Skip, William, Avery, Joyce, Natalie, Kenny, Tina, Debbie, Mary, Bert, Sandy, Mel, Shannon, Corinne, and the three daughters, and those serving in our military, Andrew, Austin, James, Joseph, Marshall, Sean, Troy, and Vincent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. <clears throat> Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us to overcome evil with good. Be with all our church leaders, especially our council president, Chris Miles, our music director, Mike Gosnell, our office administrator, Lisa Turner, our vicar, Ellen Krish, and our treasurer, Scott Tennyson, as they strive to do your will to keep our church vibrant and organized during the new way we have to worship during the pandemic. Be with all members of St. John's congregation as we worship and love you. Lord, as one body, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, especially those we name in our hearts. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In a certain hope that you give us, Lord, and we know that nothing will ever separate us from you and your love, we offer these prayers to you, knowing they will be heard and answered through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray together the most beautiful prayer, efficient, effective, just the amount of words, and perfect because Jesus.
taught it to us, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, beloved, beloved who is so loved by God, know that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God is our creator, Jesus our savior, and the Holy Spirit our comforter, the triune God, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our beautiful sending hymn, Lord, take my hand and lead me. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so now go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>